Well, some uh, pretty brutal tactics used against an elderly woman there. But as Martin has been finding out, there are criminals who are far more subtle when it comes to targeting the elderly. Don't have a bowl your toilet, please. We've been there uh, nearly five years, and I thought we were really, really safe around here, you know? Well, let me come in. I'll get a receipt. I can get you to sign everything. Is that all right? You're petrified that they're going to come back again. Is that okay if I get a drink, please? Thank you very much, sir. One of the awful facts I learned when I was a policeman is that some criminals will deliberately target older people, seek them out, betray their trust, and steal from their homes. Crime, of course, can have a devastating effect on anyone, but when the victims are the elderly, it's particularly difficult for them to recover. Operation Manhunt, a specialist team of detectives with Hertfordshire Police, deals solely with crimes against older people. They attend, on average, 20 calls a week. We've come to a report of a distraction burglary on a 94-year-old female. Unfortunately, she's got very poor eyesight poor hearing and actually is walking with a walking frame and she's been targeted by two offenders who pretended that they were there to deal with a leak and there was a problem with her water. One's kept her distracted by messing around with her taps while the other one searched the premises. Fortunately for her, a resident um, has seen this going on, challenged them and have made off. So what's happening in there at the moment then while we're speaking. Well, obviously our officers attend straight away. Uniformed officers are here, followed by detectives from Manhunt, and then obviously scenes of crime officers and the inquiries will begin in order to try chasing these offenders straight away. But also we'll do practical measures, like of course at the moment this has just happened, it's contacting the next of kin and making sure that she feels safe now. Hello, Hello. Mrs Gilbert. Yes. Lovely. Superstar yes. Hearts Police. Victims are often fearful of being targeted again. Civilian officer Sue Foster makes follow-up visits to offer support and give advice on crime prevention. It's a shock yeah. to think that they managed to get in there. We've been there and I just heard this... Gwen and Jack Gilbert were burgled just a few weeks ago. And I thought we were really, really safe around here, you know, because we are fairly yeah. secure with the security. The couple were at home watching TV in their lounge when a burglar broke into the bedroom and stole valuables. The thing that's upset me most is this jewellery. They took a gold locket. That's um, really difficult to come to terms well, with. Well, this is it, it, with the photographs of the children were only tiny in there. But um, so I'm not, the I don't suppose I'll ever get that back. Is that the majority of your jewellery? It's available? obvious how the burglary has affected no, Gwen and Jack. I'll, right, I'll phone that number to speak to you. That's I? my direct yeah. number. Each year, it's estimated there are nearly 800,000 crimes committed against the elderly. Investigators need to use increasingly cunning tactics to catch offenders. 64-year-old Carol was on holiday when her retirement bungalow was broken into. It had been the first time I'd been burgled, and that's always that, oh, gosh, you know, why does that happen to me? You get more and more angry because you're petrified that they're going to come back again because they've realised that perhaps this is an area where it's worth having a go. But when the same thief who stole from Carol targeted another home, he had no idea he was being watched. We employ a whole range of tactics, both preventative measures and obviously proactive measures. This particular victim had been subject of a distraction burglary some 12 months before. Manhunt got involved. Um, as you can see here, there's a camera that's been used which has actually caught a distraction burglar in the act. While the camera recorded the man as he tried to steal from the victim, officers were alerted. Police were on scene whilst he was still at the address and he was arrested in the act. Daniel Bolton was jailed for seven years for 42 offences of burglary, theft and fraud. He's one of an increasing number of criminals who are being caught using hidden cameras. We are ahead of the game. We're stopping that repeat offending. And it's down to the way that we do put protection in. Um, we currently have reduced uh, distraction burglary by 65% so far this year. And we're averaging a, a detection rate of 70% of our offences. 
there is no better feeling than going back telling those victims that we've caught those offenders and even better when we can return some of the property that they never thought they'd see again. That is massive job satisfaction for the team. I bet. Well, with me now are two people who know all too well how devious the criminals can be when it comes to older people. They are DCI Gareth Davis from Greater Manchester Police and Marilyn Baldwin from the Think Jessica charity. Welcome to you both and first of all to you, Gareth. Tell me about a new and relatively sophisticated crime that is targeting specifically mostly older people. That's right, we've seen a real spike in this type of criminality recently and it does target the elderly and the vulnerable whereby uh, the offenders will ring the victims purporting to be police officers. They will try and obtain from the victims over the telephone their bank account details, PIN numbers, etc. And ultimately they will send a courier around to collect the victims' bank cards and then withdraw thousands of pounds of cash from uh, cash line machines and, and, and use the cards fraudulently. Right, it's called courier fraud it's and they say fraud. they're calling these old people because they say your card's been involved in some sort of uh, funny business online and we want to, we want to get to the bottom of that. Well, this scam, as you say, Gareth, it's affecting all sorts of people across the country. We have spoken to one gentleman, he's in his 80s, he's from Essex. He was tricked into handing over his card and an expensive watch. I am in my 80s now and therefore it's possibly uh, older people that they are targeting who would be less on their guard. So uh, particularly people in my age group round about you be particularly careful. But otherwise it is so sophisticated that almost I think anyone could be taken in. Uh, Gareth, we should be uh, clear here that the tactics uh, these gangs use are pretty sophisticated in this courier fraud. Uh, what is it that people should do to try to combat them? That's right. Quite often they will use a, use a landline at the victim's address and leave the telephone line open whilst the victim moves away from the phone to um, verify the details they've provided. It's really important that the victim does not use that phone again within a, sp a specified time. Certainly about five minutes before they call back the, 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 that number that's provided to them. Otherwise they'll be speaking to the, to the offender again. Yes, it's a, it's a bit of a scam where they hold the phone down. Right. You think you're dining out again but actually you're, you're just actually talking to the, the, number, person, the same person putting on maybe a different accent. Um, that's right. Marilyn, you set up a charity that helps, again, mostly to do with old people and it's kind of male scams that you're interested in. What happened in your case you did it because your mother was severely targeted yes she was I mean these are postal scams what happened with my mum um, five years before she died she received a letter telling me she'd won a competition and all she had to do to claim a prize was send a small fee my mother did this and as a result of that her name got put on what's called a suckers list now this list is then circulated to all the criminals worldwide and as a result of that she got continually targeted of course the family tried to tell her that they were scams, they weren't genuine, but the psychology that the criminals use is so powerful, they actually turned her against the family. A whole cocktail of characters, bankers, solicitors, clairvoyants. Terrible. But very briefly, what needs to be done here? Well, through the charity we've got literature and we can get that out and we need the help of police, training standards, and there is a pathway of help, but we need to get the literature out into the homes of the old people. So. They don't have to rely on the internet, which a lot of them haven't got. Yes, a lot of them don't have access to that or don't want to get onto the internet. Um, just very briefly, these crimes go un underreported, do you think, Gareth? I do, yeah. I feel some sometimes the victims are embarrassed to report this crime. I want, to, I want to say now, if I can, there should be no embarrassment involved with this. Please, anybody who's involved in this type of criminality, victim-wise, please contact the police or action fraud. Yeah, very cynical, very, very easy to fall for. That's right. Um, thank you both. Uh, very